Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Engineering Network and also welcome to another episode of SketchUp a 3D Toolbox. Now today we will talk about a really interesting feature in SketchUp which is the multiplying and dividing. And that doesn't mean to use the SketchUp as a calculator. It is actually a way of copying an object but copying evenly over the entire space. So let me show you what I mean by that. But before we start, if you are new here and haven't subscribed, then please subscribe to my channel and also click on this small bell icon right next to the subscribe button because it will help you get notified on time when I publish a new video. Also for more updates regarding to civil engineering articles, visit to my website Professor Seval. I will drop the link in the description of this video. So this is what I have in my project for this particular episode. As you can see it is just a very simple slab and I will call it the floor actually. It is 6 feet wide and 16 feet long and this is where we are going to model some railing on it. We are actually make railing on one side of this slab. Now the reason that we are going to do railing is because with the railing we need to have some poles, small poles sticking out of the side right here and you need a lot of them. So typically railing would have you know those poles space maybe every 6 or 9 inches or something like that. So for 16 feet you are gonna have a lot of those. Now I will show you the typical way to do it. The first thing you need to do regardless of whether you do it manually or use the divide and multiply feature, you just need to model whatever it is going to make copies of. So I will just use the rectangle tool here and I want to point it here that my floor is grouped. It is very important because I want to be able to move the post that I will do on top of this independently of the floor. And if the floor is grouped then it's not gonna stick as usual. So I can just use the rectangle tool and I am gonna draw 2 in square. So I will just type 2 comma 2 and hit enter. And now it will give me 2 in square. And then I will use the push pull tool and pull it maybe let's say 3 feet. So type 3 apostrophe sign for feet and enter and now I have got a 3 feet tall 2 inch square rod stacking right above the floor. Now typically what would you do is you would select this and then use move tool. Hit M for the move tool and also hit the control key to make it the copy tool. So I will select it and drag this out 9 inches like that. So there we have the beginning of the railing but you can see that this is going to take a while and this is only 16 feet some railings are going to be much longer than that and this is going to get really annoying and really old school very quickly so i'm gonna show you how the multiply and divide tool helps you with this and they are very similar in the way they work and what they do but depending on where you are doing the railing or something else you want to pick which one is best for you so the first step is of course to model the object you want to duplicate. So the next is, this is optional but I really like to group my objects first. So select this by triple clicking on it and then right click and select make group. The next thing you want to do is you want to just like we did it manually, we will select it first and then we will hit the M key for the move tool and then hit control key to make it the copy tool and now I am gonna grab it by this corner right here. Hit the right arrow key to lock it to the red axis so that I can move my cursor anywhere I want to but it stays right on the red axis. So type 9 and enter. Now this is where the difference is. Do not deselect the copy that you made. Do not do anything else because this is the only time that the multiply and divide tool really works. Otherwise you will redo your copy. So don't deselect, don't do anything and the next step is actually there is no tool for this. There is no menu bar command. It's all done with the keyboard. It's almost kind of hidden feature actually but it works really well. So to multiply you type on your keyboard either the X key on your number pad or in simple words you can use the star key. 
so type star or x and you will notice that in our dimension box it still says length so now we are in a multiply mode and the next thing to do is let's say how many copies of this thing you want so how many times you want to multiply it so in this case i want to multiply it with 5 so type 5 and hit enter and you see what it just did this is so amazing because it just made copies of these things and they are spaced 9 inches apart it basically takes whatever movement you did with your first copy so like this is my original pole right here i copy it over 9 inches this way and let's say i times it by 5 so it made 5 version of this that are spaced the same amount of space now this is a little bit confusing because there are one thing that I always find a little bit odd that it works this way. As you notice we had one pole first then we had our second copy and then I say times it by 5. You would think it would make 5 more copies but it only made 4 so it makes one less. It's like you have to include the original one and then multiply. So it did make 5. It kept the original one and then it added 4 more to make it 5. So you have to think about that. Let's say you think ok well I need 3 more here. So just type n times 4 and it will give you 3 more. Ok so that's little bit confusing. Now in this case of course I don't have enough these poles to make it all the way down here. Now you might think you got to redo it. You got to make another copy. Well that's not the case. As long as I don't do anything else, I don't switch tool, I don't select anything else, I just finish my multiply and still it's waiting for the multiply tool. So let's say I want it one more of these so instead of 5 I can just type in time 6 and hit enter and it gives me one more so it doesn't keep multiplying saying like 6 did not keep me 6 more copies but added one more so in this case I can just keep going so I will type times 12 and hit enter but we are gonna need more than 12 to times 20 so type 20 and hit enter and looks like we just need one more so type times 21 and hit enter Perfect, look at that, this is amazing and really it only takes seconds to do this and before that it takes several minutes to make of these copies and then the next thing to do is of course to add the railing on top and for that I am actually going to grab my floor using the move tool so hit the M key and then hit control key to make it the copy tool. Then click on the floor, lock it to the blue axis, grab it upward and place it right on top of those just like this. After that I will just double click here to edit the group and then I will use the push pull tool to push it back just like this. And now I have a very simple railing. So that is the way you multiply things and you can see it works really well. But there is also divide feature as well and I will show you that next. So I show you how to multiply feature but there is also the divide feature which is very cool and actually I use that so much. So I just go and select these things and delete them. So if I know exactly how apart I want my objects from one another, like I know I want these posts exactly 9 inches apart. So I will duplicate that until I will get to the other end over there. That's a good place where you can use the multiply tool. But if you don't know how apart you want your objects away from each other, you only know how many of them you want, then the divide tool is the tool for you. So what I do for that is same thing as we did in the multiply tool where your model whatever it is you want to divide, group it and the next thing is to select it. Switch to the move tool, hit the control key to make it the copy tool and copy it. But instead of moving it just 9 inches down, you move it down to the other end. So take it is like this is the starting point and this is the end point. So this is your starting point where your railing is going to start and this is the end point where the railing will end. So you put it right here. Now again just like the multiply tool 
you need to make sure you don't do anything else don't deselect don't switch tool don't do anything and the very next thing that we use is the divide key which on your keyboard is the slash key and again in the length box type slash and then divide it by how many you want to so for example if i would say let's try 15 so type 15 and hit enter and look at that it divides the space between your starting point and end point perfectly these things are all evenly spaced not 9 inches by the way but they are perfectly evenly spaced all the way down and this is very cool now just like the multiply tool you can continue to add more poles let's say divide by 20 so type 20 and hit enter and there we go and you can divide it at any number let's say divide it by 40 and it looks amazing actually now let me show you something with smaller number let's divide it by 4 so you notice that just like in the multiply tool it doesn't give us 4 of these poles between the starting point and end point it gives us 3 poles because it counts the pole at the end point in the divide so if I divide it by 1 nothing happens if I divide it by 2 I will get 1 in the center so that's the way that it works so let's say I want it by 18 so type 18 and hit enter and that looks pretty nice and then I will just do the same thing that I did last time make a copy of the floor so switch to the move tool hit the control key switch to the blue axis and grab the floor upward and place it right on top of the pole after that double click on the top floor to edit the group use the push pull tool and push it back just like this and we are done now this is such a time saver the multiply and divide tool really powerful in sketchup and you can see that you look particularly when you are dealing with a large amount of things here we were dealing with 20 pools but imagine if you have 100 of them and you don't know how to use this multiply and divide feature then i am pretty sure you will give up before you finish your model so this is enough for today guys if you like this episode of sketchup then please click on the like button if you have any question then leave it in the comment box share this video with your friends and if you are new here and haven't subscribed then please click on the subscribe button and also don't forget to click on this bell icon because it will help you get notified on time when i publish a new video and also don't forget to visit to my website you will get the link in the description of this video so until then it's a goodbye see you with a new episode of sketchup